in mine and I did that and it was a little bit out, but then it fixes itself up a little bit right. later. Right, right. It's weird. In about in about 30 to 60 seconds. So you're better off just to start and yeah, don't do it straight away. Well, you know what I did this morning? We started, we had, a, we had one of the TLDC shows and we started it and we had to wait like five seconds. And I'm sitting waiting and I forgot what I was supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's because like, oh, when, man. <laughs> when, you, when you did your Panasonic one for Tech Down Over, all you hear was, Tone it down over. And the oh, really? Happened, it didn't come in? Yeah, it, it picked uh, up, uh, <coughs> it pick, uh, kicked off a little bit of the your Tech Down Over part on the first sentence. Yeah, so. see, that was the problem, because we did them both at the same time. So we're going to give it a, we're just going to start the stream. Are we streaming? We are streaming. Hello, everyone. We're streaming Hello. and having a private conversation, so don't pay attention for another couple no. of minutes. We're almost done. Uh, Jeff, uh, are we done? I guess we're done. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hi everyone. Welcome to Tech Down Over. This is, I don't know what episode, 80 something? I've lost track now. Yeah, we've gotten up to the you know, point where the hands don't count anymore, so we're not sure where we're at. Um, I think we're close to 90. We're, we're getting very close. Mm. I think 89 was the last one we did. I think, or is that 189? That was a different I lose one. track with the little ones, with like the one you've just done with your Panasonic. Right, we the rant. That. I keep losing track of them. That's what puts me off. I know. I, I keep ranting. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. They're good rants, so. <clears> though. <throat> it was good advice for Panasonic if they listen. Mm, yeah. They haven't released it yet. You know, I'm really disappointed. That was three days ago, Panasonic. No, there are rumors that they're going to release it in Photokina, which I think is at either the end of September or beginning of October. Uh, and that'll be good. But, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk all over the internet and the 5D Mark, I'll tell you, I'll tell you more when we're on the show so, yeah. we get, so we get it on both sides. But mm. um, do you want to start the show recording? Yep. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, you want to count us down? Yep. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanani and I'm joined today by my good friend and co-host, Jeff Blanchard, coming to us from Melbourne, Australia. Hey, Jeff, how are you today? Good, thank you, Rick. And it's uh, what's it? The third of September, so the third day of spring for us. So we've got out a miserable winter and it's spring already. To spring. Oh, see, we don't do we don't do fall till September twenty first or second. No, we we we're, we're very uh, funny. We do it exactly on the date, no matter what the weather's like. Well, congratulations <laughs> for heading into spring. Mm. It's it's overrated, you know. But <laughs> that's right. Well, here spring it rains more in spring than any time of the year usually. Well, so. that's kind of nice. I wish we had rain. And with that, let's start our intro. Well, Jeff, the world of photography is turned on its head. It's angry. It's in revolutionary mode. It's considering new things. Mm. And all because we're not going to buy. Oh, you might buy. I don't know. You didn't say you weren't. I'm not going to buy a 5D Mark IV. Oh, me neither. I'm not. Not, not so much the about anything wrong with the product, but uh, I'm not in the market yet to spend that amount of money for for the uh, little I, bit of difference it will give me. I think also the 5D Mark IV is a compromise, and I'm tired of compromising. I, I came to a conclusion this this weekend. I was actually chatting with the angry photographer Ken Wheeler. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, as we were talking, I was watching one of his podcasts, he brought up really a good point. Why settle for these cameras that don't do really what you want to do? Mm. And I go, that's true. I've been buying a lot of Canons, which I really don't like that much because they don't have the video the way I want it. They don't have this. You know, the ADD is a pretty cool camera, but it, it doesn't have HDMI output. That's sort of an irritant. Mm. The video quality is okay, but it's not the best on earth. It's okay. But there's limitations. It only has one card slot. I wish it had two. No, no, you have to go up for that one. So then you get a 7D Mark II or something, but that doesn't have uh, good video. It's got okay video. You know, they haven't gone 4K. Everyone and their mother is doing 4K, but not Canon. And when they do 4K, they make it archaic. And so, mm. so I've just been file size. bitching about it. I'm, I'm sure the, the 5D Mark IV is actually a pretty good camera mm. on the whole, if you like to carry that kind of camera. And I'm, and I'm thinking, why do I really need to carry a heavy camera with big old lenses when I can get equally good results from my mirrorless cameras, which I actually enjoy more? 
It's an interesting. Because yeah, the quite uh, as I said the difference in weight is incredible between the yeah. the mirrorless and the non mirrorless, and they said one of the big things people like, and I do like, I can see what. I'm going to take through the electronic viewfinder. I know. And they're really good and they don't take up that much power, well, apart from the Sony ones. Right. <laughs> so, uh, like sorry, Panasonic Sony. ones really do well on the batteries. Right. But sorry, Sony, you deserve that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's true. Why, to me, an optical viewfinder is, is just pathetically ridiculous. I see no purpose in it. I mean, it doesn't tell you anything. You're just seeing as if you would by going, okay, here's my camera. Hey, no difference. <laughs> It looks about the same. <laughs> That's right. So, so how do I know what I'm setting? I, I have to think, okay, well, I know it says here's my exposure and here's my aperture. Okay, so I have an idea, but it, you're, only, you're only kind of in an idea. You're not perfect. Whereas with an electronic viewfinder, you see exactly what you're going to get. It, it only makes logical common sense. I hate those stupid old optical viewfinders. Never did like them anyway because I never thought, even when I was younger, why bother with this? It, it makes no sense. And, and, and by the way, you can send us all the hate mail you want. We don't care. Um, <laughs> you know, optical viewfinders, dead, dead, dead. Or if, like a lot of people are saying, why don't you make it a hybrid viewfinder? Mm. A little button that goes optical, a little button that goes electronic. And that way you get the best or worst of all worlds. And because, as I said, there's, there's times when people uh, want it and there's times when people don't. But as I said, those t type of people get have two cameras. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the, the professional <coughs> might keep that one. That's fine. But it's just so much better to have that electronic viewfinder. But I think the time where people are giving up that big, chunky weight, they don't mind the size of the camera. They actually like that. It's yeah. just like I've got the Panasonic FZ1000. It's not a small camera, no, but, but it's, it's nice. extremely light, but, it, but it's still good, easy to hold because it is a bigger, chunkier camera. And also with the mirrorless, you don't get that stupid anti-aliasing filter that makes no. everything soft. Uh, to me, it makes no sense. You lose 25% of your sharpness with that right off the bat. And, and you know, if you want to do something softer, you can change it in your picture profiles or your your movie profiles. So you don't you're not stuck with that, but... The, the mirrorless cameras are very sharp. They mm -hmm. really have that nice, clean look. I mean, when you take a picture of a building, it's perfect. I mean, you see the lines, they look good. And if you put good glass on them, it's even better. And ever since Metabones on my GH4 came out with that uh, .64X or whatever they call it, oh my gosh, now you've got a full APS-C sensor, almost full frame, on a GH4. Mm. It makes the pictures just look gorgeous but you know we have a little video here of who may wind up hurting canon a lot did you know that canon sales last year basically in the camera and video division went down 41 percent that's not good in anybody's language 24 percent on photo and 17 percent on video my mm. gosh 41 percent drop in sales and they still don't budge they recently reduced the price, oh, not long ago, they reduced the price of the uh, 1CX, or, mm -hmm. or 1XC, whatever it's called, I think it's 1CX. And that one was a cinema camera that's based on an XLR, bo a, a, a DSLR body. It was something like a $16,000 camera, if, or 18000 They reduced it $12,000. Now, <laughs> that tells you how much they overcharge on this stuff. And all the C100, the C, the C100 went down fifteen hundred dollars, or sixteen hundred this year. And it, it just came out less than a year ago. It's already down fifteen hundred. They're not selling them. Mm. The D, the C200 went down, I think, five or six, and the C300 went down even more. So I think they're getting the hint that maybe we're overcharging. What do you think? Well, I think it's just one of these things. Is like the old pioneer type thing that mm. it's like canon they're on the top and uh, they they just uh, live on that a lot of the time they do great products but yes. they've got to keep ahead and and you know stretch the limit a bit of what people do want because like pioneer did the same with audio and they were top top notch but you hardly have ever hear of them these days no and in fact the, i was listening to peter greg last night and he made a comment that the head of canon did something really stupid 
he got involved in politics in Britain on Brexit. He told people, you know, you should have stayed in. Oh, you don't do that. You don't get involved in other people's politics, not when you're a vendor. That was dumb. So their sales in, in England, which were already bad, have gotten even worse. Mm. You just kind of shake your head and just go, what are they thinking? But anyway, here is who the new competitor might be. This particular camera may take over the industry like the GH4 did two and a half years. Take a look. I believe this is only music, Jeff, and it's not that uh, well, loud. We better, to, better talk over it then. <laughs> so we can talk over it, but this is the Fujifilm X-T2. It's coming out next week. I was going to go buy it this weekend, but I'm, a, I'm about five days too early. Uh, it's coming out on the 8th of September, and it has focus that is as good or better than the dual pixel focus. They call it array focus. And I was waiting for somebody to come and say, okay, Canon, you know what? You can stick your focus, like Peter Gregg says, up your asphalt. Um, <laughs> and, and thank you, Peter. We really enjoyed that one. That was funny. Uh, and, you know, everybody wants to do Pixel because it works well. It's not perfect, but it works well. This array focus, if you look at the camera review from uh, Chris and Jordan of the camera mm -hmm. store, take a look at that, their review of their of their shooting experience in New York City with the X-T2. My gosh, it's beautiful. Even Jordan liked it. Uh, yeah, it no complaints. Like it he wasn't really complaining. I mean, there's always a nit. No camera's perfect. But he was impressed with what they were seeing. And it, it just looks like an incredible piece of, of work. What but, I like, their camera profiles mm. actually did something <laughs> that looked really nice. Oh, they're gorgeous. They have like well, a lot you know, of camera profiles don't do much for them. No, and you know, Fuji's famous for doing film. And they made a lot of film for the movie industry and their film looks are now on their camera in mm. photo and video. Oh my gosh, if you look at and this was the pre release version, if you look at what they were shooting in New York, it was absolutely gorgeous. I was looking at the video and there's one part where there's a bike a, a bicyclist going by and they get him at the you know, middle of one block all the way to the end mm -hmm. of another block and the guy never loses he got buses going in front of him and he never loses focus it was beautiful uh it, it, I mean, it was so sharp and that's a mirrorless camera i was just going oh my god that's absolutely gorgeous and they do 4k they do 10 minutes in camera but if you get the battery grip then you it's they call it the the grip booster it's a booster now not only does it extend your video to 30 minutes in 4k but it also offloads heat from the camera and it has the headphone port on it so the headphone ports on mm. your on your grip so it's not in the way when you're trying to move your camera around and they also have a microphone input uh 3.5 millimeter as it should be um they don't have a fully articulating screen, but it does articulate up, down, and a little bit, like 45 degrees to the side. That's still that. better it's got than like nothing. Those European windows, if you press a button, it bends one way. If you put it back, it bends yes. another way, I see. Yeah. yeah, and it's probably along that same idea, but you know, they work really nicely. And everything, every reviewer I've seen so far is just going, wow. Uh, the, there's no stabilization in camera or on their lenses that I've seen so far. And the video stuff looks really stable mm. for the most part. Uh, the kit lens, if you get the camera with a kit lens, it is about eighteen ninety five. That's a pretty good price for a full DSLR with 4K video, interchangeable lenses. It comes with an 18 to 55 millimeter uh, F, uh, maybe 2.8, I can't remember, uh, kit lens. And it looks pretty nice. I mean, I've seen people shooting with it. I think that's what they were shooting with. Uh, in some of their sample videos, it looks like a great camera. And the, the, if the GH4 comes out soon, plus the the X-T2, I think you're going to have two cameras that are going to really, really make a difference to Canon and Nikon. If the array technology for the focus, so in essence, as you're following something, it creates an array to keep that focus in that mm. array. It's like a predictive array. Now, that is incredible. I knew somebody would come up with something better than Canon on dual pixel. It had to, they have to. I mean, you, as soon as somebody creates something, somebody else creates something better. It may take years,
but they will do it. That's what do they say? Necessity is the mother of invention. And that uh, you know, the limitation of ten minutes on four uh, K and what's it? Fifteen minutes on HD. I don't think that's too much of a problem for that type of camera. If no. it is a problem, you usually want a video camera that can just sit there and record three hours. Exactly, you get a camcorder. Yeah, you get a camcorder, but this is for when you want to run and shoot and you want to film a couple of things. And I don't know about you, but the amount of times I've gone over 10 minutes, I've never done that. You know, no, with, with the, these sort of cameras, you take 10 second shot here, 20, maybe two minutes if you're stretched, if waiting for something to happen. But yeah. if you if you don't use these cameras for that, so it shouldn't be a limitation. No, and, and when we've done interview videos, like corporate interviews, if it goes longer than 30 minutes, we could stop and start again. That's not a problem. Um, mm. There's always lags in an interview where you might stop, the person wants to get something to drink or whatever. So it's not a problem that, that 30 minutes is too short. 30 minutes is pretty long. A 30 minute interview is long. If you have to go longer, it doesn't take anything to press stop and start again. No, and, and like we said, if you're going to do that, you usually got a video camera set up for, for an interview like that anyway, mm -hmm. so and yep. maybe using uh, this camera for a, a breakaway shot. Sure. One thing I had to ask about that, Rick, I saw it, everybody always says for still frames, you know, the continuous shooting. Yes. And I see it's going from 5 to 14 frames per second, but I didn't quite understand when when do you get it at 14 frames a second? What settings the do you have to have The only way you get 14 frames that? is when you have the battery grip on. Oh, okay. So the battery grip is actually a power booster for the camera. It's really quite clever. Without the battery grip, I think you get, I want to say seven. Five. Five's the minimum. It says. Five is the minimum. Mm. Okay. The minute you get the still good battery grip on, I think you get eleven to fourteen. Yeah, that's uh, right. And that's pretty that's incredible because the battery grip changes the frequency and power of the camera to last longer, and it diffuses the the amount of heat that it gets. I think that's pretty clever, uh, and I like battery. I I prefer shooting with battery grips because my hands are large, and mm -hmm. you know, I, have you ever held the the A seven R or the A seven S two and any of those? In a store? I haven't yet. I'm too scared to have a hold of them because I don't want it to be put off from them yet. Oh man! Every time <laughs> I go to Best Buy, I pick it up and I go, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just really bad. It's like I'm holding a little. It's like my hands are really big and the thing is really small. And the ergonomics suck. They absolutely suck. Now, okay, you put the battery grip, it's a little better, but it's not great. It's just a small, ridiculous camera. I mean, small is good sometimes, but why make it that small? And then, of course, you have the heat issues and everything else. That makes no sense. Uh, and they don't have, by the way, dual cards either, which is not, to me, very professional. I think you demand, demand it, dual cards. Mm. Uh, because really, a single card slot means you're screwed if anything goes wrong. And I don't know about you, but I've had chips uh, or cards, sand disks, by the way, I hate those pieces of junk, that have gone bad on me, two of them, during, during recordings. And I went, oh, man. And I, I lost half days of recordings because of one stupid sand disk card. That's bad. Uh that's I haven't really lost bad. anything. I probably haven't been filming anything important enough, so Murphy's Law doesn't kick in. Kick oh, yeah, the minute you film something... Unless it's something desperately important. Yeah, the minute you do something for work, it's over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it, it'll hit you twice as hard because, you know, you're, you're already in, 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 in a debt mode. You owe, you owe the universe more. <laughs> now, this Fuji one, it uh, looks like it's about fifteen ninety nine your end, by the looks of it. Fifteen ninety nine, and then with the... Um, the 18 to 55 millimeter, which I believe is a $600 lens, you get it for eighteen ninety five. the whole thing. That's a pretty mm. good price. Yeah, for me, about 2,000, 2,120 roughly for, for the camera. For that one, if, if it's exactly the same price yeah. as and then, uh, just and with the dollar change But then you do need to get the battery group, which is about $340, mm. I think. But I don't care because it also gives you three batteries. You have two in the grip and one inside okay. the camera. Yeah, that's what I saw. That was good. Not like most of the grips usually take away the standard battery, you so you only one. have two, which uh, no, I didn't and, see, see that, that it had three on that. And so. some of them only give you one one battery, which mm. is like the Nikons only give you one battery in the grip. The, uh, the Canons give you usually two, but I've had some other ones that give you one. I find it irritating because one isn't a lot of battery. Oh, the Panasonics only give you one. You one in the camera and one in the grip. It was funny about that. I watched uh, Chris and Jordan's review on that, and I didn't really get it until I watched something else that that 
little fellow who kept butting in with the, <laughs> the, his, Fuji, the guy. Fuji guy on another channel. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, he, he does his own podcast, The Fuji Guy. Oh. And that's why they kept saying, get away, because it's like one podcast breaking into another. So I yep. didn't get it until I saw, <laughs> saw that's that. That's funny. I haven't seen his podcast. i got to go see his podcast. He's so obnoxious, it's probably funny. Um, he, he, does, he does a lot by the looks of it, but I've never seen him before. But that's why I, when he kept butting in, I didn't sort of get the relevance of it. So. I didn't either until Clark here told me it was. he's from Fuji. I go, he's Fuji? Okay. <laughs> Or maybe it's not Fuji. Maybe it's just the Fuji guy. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's the Fuji guy because there's, the, there's a few on that network that do Fuji and okay. that, but he's just called the Fuji guy. Oh, that's, oh, that's but the I, uh, podcast. I, 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 I tell you, I, I ordered two from, from Sammy's. I should be getting them next weekend. Not this weekend, but the following one. I, the video quality of that thing, everything I've seen from all the reviews so far, I'm looking at it going, my God, that's gorgeous. Mm. It's looking better than Canon and Panasonic video. So it, Canasonic has to come up with something pretty good for, for the GH5 to get now. Somebody's saying it's going to have 8K video. I think that's too much. I don't want 8K video. Just give me 4K and give me two slots. I want two mm -hmm. slots. Uh, that would be, to me, much better than having 8K. Who cares about 8K? We're not going to see 8K TVs in a while. And that's just too big. It's going to be just massive. But let's face it, these Fuji as well. We we forget like these people have been doing films for years. They yeah. know what color is. Mm -hmm. They should. And by the looks of that camera, it really shows. By just, I've never seen film of a camera which has such really just nice colors straight out of the camera like they were showing. For I that. know it was really quite nice. It was it was quite nice. And Canon and Fuji have the best color reproduction of anyone. Period. Nikon's are okay, but they're not quite as nice as Canon. Sony's are actually not that nice. It's a colder. To me, Sony's are too blue. There's too much of a cold feel to the Sony's. Mm -hmm. They're okay. They're sharp, and they look a lot of, lot of dynamic range. But to me, it's a colder look. You have to really warm them up to get more out of it. And I think that just means you have to color grade your buns off. And that's tedious. Um, I, I really don't want to color grade everything I have. That's a lot of work. Now, unless you're in that, you know, that top end movie line thing where no matter what you're filming, you're going to change the color, you want it something that you can use straight out of the camera. Because a lot of the things we do, you don't want to spend three days colorizing because no. most people won't appreciate the work you've done. But when you get the quality that that's coming out of, that's more than acceptable. Yep, that's true. That's and plus, true. also, I don't know about you, no matter how good it is. It, I, I would hate to film in one of those profiles that make it look like uh, there's no color that you're filming in black and white, even though you know yeah. you can adjust it better right. in in post. I just hate the look of it in the in the first place. Yeah, I like black and white, but I wouldn't film in it. No, because what if I want to add color later? Because you can in post, you can easily add a filter like that. But, I don't no, but what I'm saying is, you know, like on the Sony, on the S-Log3, I think it is, when you're filming that, it looks like everybody's nearly black and white. Oh, I know. But then it's when horrible. you go into post, it's, you've got to adjust the colors, but it's it just looks horrible. It's totally yeah, it grayscale. And not only that, when you're shooting in certain lighting, that grayscale is really hard to see. Because mm. uh, I've heard people say that when they're looking at the back of the camera, it's just very gray. They can't really make out too well what they're pointing at sometimes. And I, I, that's why I didn't like the C100 and I returned it. I couldn't make out anything on it. To me, it was all gray. And I go, great. And I don't see that well anyway, so gray kills me. Um, but it's, it was too gray. Too, not, you know, I don't have that kind of time to record that, then spend a day to three fixing it. Just so I can pull a shadow, it's not worth it. I was seeing that the, the, he was saying about, he was talking to the angry photographer. I was watching one of his podcasts as well, and I didn't realize he, until then, that he does a lot in the Fuji as well, that he bought, because he says he's bought everything Nikon as well, yeah, yeah. and he's bought everything Fuji that they've brought out. He I didn't realize love, he'd uh, he loves done a lot. He does a thorough job when he looks at things. I do like what yeah. he does. He shows people. Yeah. You know, he has a, a personality which kind of grates on some people. I find him funny. <laughs> I, I um, find it quite quite amusing. So. You know, sometimes it's just hilarious, especially when he gets up and leaves laughing. <laughs> he just walks away. I think I can't, that's hilarious when he does that. I can't repeat what he says about the X-T2. <laughs> oh, it's the, it's the, 
the the big yeah the big T. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. It's quite. It's even different. It's even a more funny one than that. But it's it's, uh, it's something so inappropriate that you, you know, yeah, you get yeah yourself so I can't remember what he set. called it. But there, sometimes I just laugh when he comes up with some of the stuff. I mean, I do too. I, I, but then it was one of them. It wasn't the that other one that we know of him doing. It was uh, another one which was quite funny as well. So, but yeah, he, he does spend a lot of time. He he's thorough. You, you know, you can listen even if you don't agree with him. You can't. It's not just talking rubbish. He does his research. He, mm-hmm. And he talks in a language. A lot of people who do this talk too high level. But we, even if you don't understand the thing, he talk. He, you understand what he's getting at, and he explains everything why he's come to a particular conclusion. He doesn't just hate something or like something for a particular reason. He goes really in depth. And well, no, I do for like example, what he when he does. complains about some of the lenses and he talks about how many elements are in each lens, he's got a point. Mm-hmm. The more elements you have in a camera the more diffraction, diffusion you're going to get with light. And they manipulate light sometimes well, sometimes not too well. Mm. But he keeps saying, you know, look at the older lenses. They had three to five elements and they were beautiful. Now you've got 15, 18 elements in some of these lenses. And one thing I don't like, I hate when they take away all your your uh, flares. Why can't I have a flare? Why do mm. I have to add it in post? What if I like lens flares? And almost every lens now has no more lens flare. I shot. I took a shot the other day with the Panasonic and the Metabones on one of the uh, Sigma lenses. And mm-hmm. I'm looking at the sun. It was a perfect flare, and it came out flat. And I went, oh, man, I love that flare. It took out the beauty of that whole shot, that flare, gone. And I go, why do you do that? What if you like flares? <laughs> uh, I've spent years trying to get rid of them, and now people want them back. I like. I've always liked flares. I mean, yeah. Sometimes it gets in the way, but that's the reality of light. And, it's and there. if it gets in the way, you just move your you angle move to get it, away from exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> and so now you know they're getting rid of all that, and and I think they're doing a great disservice because lens flare. I mean, is it's a natural occurrence of light. It's what happens when the light hits the optics. And it's not going to be perfect. So now we have all these elements that kill the flare. Well, what else are they killing? We don't know. I was just seeing, was saying about earlier about Photokina, mm-hmm. and that's in, uh, on the 20th of September to the 25th of September in Cologne in Germany. Yep, that's going to be that's the big it. one. And the good thing is keep your eye out because uh, by the sound of it, uh, Chelsea and Tony Northrup are going to be teaming up with Chris and Jordan to record something oh, over that'll there. that'll be fun. So they're all they're all the good people are going over there. So uh, just after that, there's going to be some great uh, maybe they'll wear their on it. And I know Tony he do, does them so thoroughly and, and quite frequently. He'll have something out, and the next day I don't know how he does it because it's it's not he, easy he to do sleep. those things. He, he doesn't sleep. No, he mustn't do. But it's just as I said, he doesn't rant either. But he he knows his stuff so well. Yeah. Though, it's, he does, so, and he's the best review I've ever liked on there because he gives an all round opinion of it. So I really yep. do like what he and, does. But I, I enjoy Chris and Jordan's reviews because they're absolutely fun. <clears throat> yes, they're fun. And you know, of course, I like, but I haven't seen too many recently. Is is Corey? Corey Benoit hasn't been doing no, as many reviews as he much. used to. He must be. Well, you know what? It's it's he's a wedding photographer, and it's mm-hmm. summer. He's probably really busy with that because uh, I got to ask him about the, he hasn't done a review of the X-T2 yet. I, at least I don't think so. I, I didn't see one. Um, I'm going to go look up and see if he's done one because he makes, he does really good 40 minute, really detailed and that's what, reviews that's, that's too. That's probably why, because he, he would need weeks and weeks because he does really f- good, nearly 50 minute reviews. And I know. You're sort of enthralled with them. You just uh, can't leave them alone and you must do it in depth to keep you in there for 40 odd yep. minutes. And I, and I watch his whole thing from beginning to end. Mm. I find him very interesting and that's why we've had him on. He hasn't returned any emails recently, so I think he is probably maxed Busy. out on work. Um, you know, that's when you're a wedding photographer in this time of year, that's when all the weddings happen or a lot of them. So he's probably doing all the summer weddings and traveling. Plus he doesn't do them just locally. I think he travels to other places too. So, uh, Rick, what I would suggest to you as well, what I've got on to, uh, I don't know if I've said this before, but there's uh, the Petapixel Photography Podcast. It's just an audio one that's about twice a week. I haven't, I haven't two, listened to it yet. You did mention that one. I've got to yeah, go find it. 
only 20 minutes and they're really good things to listen to you know in between places because it keeps you up to date with all the, what's going on in the industry and that and he does a yeah. damn good job he pre-records it and does it on the day but and has a script and all that so it's not off the cuff right but it's really good but he comes up and like it's one of the things about some sony uh, rooms moving to uh, from a 14-bit raw to a 16-bit 16 wow on that camera so see but that's so big and do you really need all that control i don't know oh. i think it's excessive I don't know but as i said that's rumors it's always right. it's a good thing to keep rumors on like they were saying as canon's painted these uh outrageously big lenses and all that but a lot of people say yeah but a lot of companies do that to get other companies thinking they're doing something better that they're not actually doing yeah, I don't like the painted so, lenses. So, I, so they patent something big that they're not even producing, but right. other companies think they are, so they try to catch up. And Yeah, you know, I mean, they have a ton of lenses, and some of them are good, and usually when they review them against other lenses, Canon always comes in third. Uh, occasionally they'll come in first, but it's rare. Uh, and it, if you notice, whenever you see the lens reviews, as soon as you get up to F5, everybody's the same. There's not much difference in sharpness no. or anything else, F6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... Pretty much all the lenses are about as good. And then then you get all these wide lenses, which are very fast at f1.2. And they're all really kind of crappy at f1.2. There are some good ones, like the uh, the uh, Panasonic Noctocron, Leica Noctocron. Mm -hmm. That's an f1.2, and it, it just eats light, and it's beautiful. It's sharp, even at wide open. But there aren't a lot of lenses that sharp wide open. But you find like a lot of, like you're saying, they're quite similar, but the ones like the, I think the Tamron and the Sigma, mm -hmm. they're all quite the same, but they're so much cheaper than the, the, and that's the only brand equivalents. The brands are overcharging. And like even the, the Tamron, they make them even look the same as the Nikon Tam, uh, lenses, <clears throat> so you don't, don't even look any different. No, the only, the only way you can really tell easily is you look at the lens hood or the cap, mm -hmm. the lens cap. Because it usually has, you know, Tamron, or you can say, oh, that's a Tamron. Because when you just mm -hmm. pick them up, they all look about the same. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, some look a little more pregnant than others because they're really thick <laughs> around the middle. And they're just a little too big. Uh, and if you look at some of the big lenses, they have these huge fronts. So you're looking at something like this, and yet you take a Micro Four Thirds or an APS-C sensor with a smaller lens, and it still looks as good. Because all of that light needs to be controlled as it goes through all of the elements. So they gather a lot of light, but then you have to manipulate it. Uh, when I was chatting with Ken, I made a comment about the Metabone speed booster on, on the GH4 and how wonderful it is. And he goes, I don't know, it messes too, with light too much. It scares him. It's like too much messing with light. I, I think Metabones are alchemy, pure alchemy. How they get the light mm. to do what it does is amazing. It's it's mind boggling. Now, does that uh, in the uh, the Fuji does that has a Metabones to fit all your normal lenses, or what no. lenses does that take? There is a Metabones right now that does FD lenses, which I think are the old non digital lenses, but I'm not sure. Uh, the Canon FD, I'm not sure which ones those are. I've got a lot of Canon and Sigma and Tamron Canon mounts. They work with Metabones on the Panasonic, but I don't see anything yet. But if the Fuji does as well as everybody's predicting right now, mm -hmm. there'll be a Metabones for it. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Because it probably wouldn't take that much to convert it from one to the other. You can get a cheap $20 adapter that will let you put a Canon lens on, but you're now autofocus deprived. Mm. So I like autofocus. I mean, especially you, now if you're doing an interview and you're not moving, then you can manually focus no problem. But if you're out there... Manual focus without a follow focus system is really tough on video. At that point, you're better off with a camcorder. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. Because as I said, nearly all of us we've we've, we've all done that. Oh, I'll switch it on to man manual focus. I can do a much better job. But then you get back to the office and you find out, no, I can't. Because <laughs> you always think it's in focus, and the camera, the, it's always the camera seems to do a better job with these autofocuses, yeah. I think. And yeah. the only time is, is if there's something really <clears throat> obvious that's in the shot and you haven't seen it, and it focuses in on that. But if that's the case, it's usually there's a tree branch, but you usually can, your eye's not that bad to see it. But uh, right. if there's no obstructions in the plate, in the way, the camera does a far better job than nearly any human, right. I think. That's true. 
Now, in your case, you're, you, you haven't bought a new camera in a while. What are mm -hmm. you waiting for? What are you looking for? I'm waiting for something like this. I like the Sony, that sort of uh, type of specs on there and uh, with the performance it's got. It's got the 42 megapixel you know, still shots, but I'm waiting for the uh, A7R Mark II to morph to be a hybrid of the A7S Mark II. Hmm. That's what I want because but I don't that probably want won't to happen to. because the A7S no. has the big pixels <clears throat> and the A7R has the teeny pixels. And even mm. though they have a lot more pixels, I think it's what, 42 pixels or something like 42, uh, or is it 50 uh, megapixels? I forgot. Even though they've got all those pixels, they're not going to give you, in some respects, the, the quality of those bigger pixels on the A7S Mark II. So, but, you know, a lot of people want the big megapixels, but in reality, I, I don't know, uh, or big megapixel cameras, I think I almost prefer something in the 20 to 30 range max, max. Well, well like you said, the 24 point, th like that 24.3 nice. for the Fuji, the Panasonic, I think the GH4 is that, and the FZ1000, the GH, GH4 is only 16. really nice pictures. But the GH4 is only 16, it's pretty low. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, they've said 1,000 is 24, so. No, they have a 20. The GX8, the smaller one, mm. is 20 or 21. But and I, I, everybody's predicting the GH5 will probably be 21. Mm -hmm. They could go. Wouldn't it be interesting if they went as big as 24? Because that would be the first micro four-thirds at 24. Mm. But there may be some physical limitations of having that big a sensor with the micro four-thirds optics. So I'm not sure. But even then, like you said, even around that 20 megapixel, uh, well, like my, I've still got the Canon A uh, uh, 60D, which is only 80, well, it's 18 megapixels. Right. <clears throat> but that still does a fantastic job. It, it, when it doesn't, it's only my lack of uh, quality of yeah. taking the picture that makes a difference. It's yeah, not the camera's Canon, fault. And Canon does have nice pictures. It does have good mm. photos. Um, it's not as good in, in dynamic range from what I've seen. Even the, the Mark IV, I've heard some people say it's got pretty good dynamic range. It didn't look as good. I thought it was only 12 stops of dynamic range, and I think other people are higher right now so it's okay it'll probably take very nice pictures uh, but you know even the 5dsr which i have which i'm going to sell i didn't tell you no i'm going to sell the 5dsr the 7d mark ii and my add oh. i am jumping ship i've had it i've actually the 5ds4 just really ticked me off i've had it i don't want to play the stupid canon game anymore however i do like canon for camcorders and i do like my xc10 i'm keeping those Yes, when I heard about that, I just thought you'd thrown in the towel altogether. <laughs> I give up. No, no, no. Yeah, just I'm done. No more cameras. Yeah, my phone is now my my friend. No, no. Uh, oh, speaking well, now of that's phones, a problem now as well. Speaking of phones, I said that's a problem now. If that's your friend, <laughs> maybe maybe my phone will explode any moment on me, and I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah, you might be dead too. <laughs> uh, this is the okay, folks. If you have bought, like I did. The Samsung Note 7. It's a pretty good phone. It's got some quirks to it, but it's pretty good. Way too sensitive aside on the screen. I really hate that. So I had to put um, a trianium. I don't know what a trianium is, but it's a trianium case, which kind of gives a little Sounds bit more of a bezel to the edges so that your hands don't overlap and hit all the time. But you can literally float over it with your fingers and it just f windows pop. They fly. A little too sensitive. Maybe that's why it explodes. But we, Jeff sends me a note this morning, and he, and he was very, hi, Rick. Has your phone been recalled yet? They're exploding. <laughs> I was like, oh, good, good to I know. I said there's a possibility <laughs> of them. I know. I well, 30, 70 have exploded so far. No, no, th there's, uh, there's only been there's uh, only been 38 incidences where they've had battery problems out of about. Oh, I read somewhere that was 30, 30 or 35 out of every million, and they've sold 2.5 million. Now they said they've only. Well, I keep hearing they've only sold a million. They said they've only had 38 problems so far, okay. or something. But depends who you listen to. But, but you know what's uh, amazing? They are going to replace every, every single, single. That's 2.5 million phones they've sold in mm. two weeks. And they're going to, do you know how much money they're going to lose on that one? All because somebody, uh, hey, uh, 
Hey, Kim. And I just feel I you... just feel so sorry for them because I mean, it's just round about the launch of the the new the iPhone. iPhone yeah, but you know the Apple iPhone will probably have its own issues. But I thought it's. Uh, but the thing is, it's it's the way the world works these days. If this technology and this phone had been out ten years ago, mm -hmm. forty units having a problem, nobody would have worried no, about. No, actually, it's and actually, just, thirty-five out of two point five million, not much. Not, but as I said, they're being cautious, and because they know people won't accept not doing something about it, and it's only small numbers, but hey, the, the, it's the way of the world to keep people safe. So, well, also, I what the real reason sometimes is sometimes that they do have the guts just to say, "No, we'll do that." Yeah, but they've got to do it, and then people respect them. They'll say, "Well, if I've got one of their phones, I know it's okay." Because if it's a problem, they'll tell me about it. If think, they know about I it. I think the real reason isn't they love you so much as much as they don't want to be sued. No. But, but still, as I said, that you know that it's only there because uh, it's the way of the world. I, I like. I was watching one of uh, Angry Photographer's comments about uh, he didn't. He wasn't doing a review on on Sony, but he made a comment that goes, "Why would you buy anything from a company that makes PA, you know, PlayStations?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you know what? I've heard that from Sony in the past. People have said they're in too many things, and they're not good at everything they do. And they are pretty good at, at photo and video, but they also have issues. Um, and they probably are paying a lot of photographers to say, I love my Sony. Because some of them are kind of over the top. And, you know, I don't know. It's interesting. And I suppose you could be saying the same thing with Samsung. As Absolutely. Said, they, yeah. They, they're into far more than Sony are. Right? Mm -hmm. I think they're into shipping. They're into everything Samsung, aren't they? Uh, they are. They are. And, and Canon is too. Canon's into printing, into telescopes, into all sorts of different areas um nikon's pretty much cameras that's all they do um panasonic does everything they're a big consumer electronics company they're, they're really matsushita which makes all sorts of stuff and so it is sort of interesting but yeah the only thing i hate about having to get a new phone is setting the damn thing up again it's it takes funny you days say to that. set these stupid things up it's funny you should say that. I was seeing a couple of reviews saying about, so this is, I don't mind sending it back, but I don't want to spend two days setting the damn yeah. thing up again. Everybody's so. in the same. I hate that. You know, pay, pay us for the two days. <laughs> you know, I mean, so it is a little irritating. But, I mean, But that's the thing is with Android, and that, that's probably one of the big differences between Android and, and the iPhone is there's so many variations of mm -hmm. Android that it's, it's not just plug in and, and away you go. And, and that's the, ad, the, the law with Android, that you can do so many different things that right. you want to do. But the thing is, the downside is, you better spend time do, uh, setting it up to do the right thing. Right. And, and with Apple, you only have one piece of junk to worry about, so you're good. Android's yeah, and you got many pieces told, of junk. That's it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I've had my four iPhones, and I, I gave up on Apple. I, I'm pretty disgusted with Apple. They're another Speak. control free company. You will do it our way. You will do it the way we want you to. And if you don't, we kill you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But uh, look, while we're talking about phones, I just noticed today that uh, TGI has uh, uh, released, you know, we've both got the Osmo. Yeah. They've got a, a new one with just a, a phone mount, so you, without that camera on it. So uh, I don't know if that will be available separately to put on our uh, the, the, the handle. <clears throat> Probably as an accessory. Maybe. Yes, I wouldn't because it, the release that that would be quite a good idea. So you could put your your Galaxy on there because some of the times you don't need to see what you're doing as long <coughs> as you know it's in front of you. Right, that would be a good idea, good accessory to uh, put on that. That is interesting. I like the Osmo; it's sort of fun. Yeah, I've been out the other week and I've just got to put something together. I took it out into. Uh, the the, uh, the the city well the dandenong here well that, our main town that's just here yeah. and on the bike and on a sunday afternoon so i'll have to put some of that together but it's uh, does a damn good job i'm really pleased with it you know you know what i like most whenever i see camera videos and reviews i love 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 when they go out at night and film busy areas or when they film yes. and I, I don't know why i just love the lights and the way it looks mm. and those are my favorites yeah, I do. I've got to get out and do that, but sometimes I just feel a bit scared with me camera well, gear yeah, out especially in the middle in, of the in, you should live in Well, you should live in America where all of our cities are pretty much rotten hell holes in downtown areas, so you have to be careful. I mean, you got the wrong place, wrong time. You're mugged, um, <laughs> and that's not a good thing. 
But but I love those kind of reviews when they're out and, and doing the, the different cars going by and all the light effects and the people. It's fun. I, I just, I don't know why. I just I, I guess I like street photography. Well, it's a bit like, it's, you know, you do the, the nighttime shots. And how many times have you flown into a city in a, and how gorgeous it looks from the plane? And then when you take off from the same same place in the morning, it looks horrible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, I flew into Chicago one time, which is kind of a dump, and it looked gorgeous. It was so well lit. I was going, my God, this, what city is this? It's absolutely beautiful. Then I saw it in the daytime. I went, not so beautiful. But, you know, it, it teaches own. Uh, well, I actually didn't mind Chicago that not, much. It was okay. Not, you just have to know what areas to stay clear of. It's It's a little dangerous in Chicago, but... The outskirts are beautiful. There's some really nice areas all around the outskirts, and the lake areas are nice. But downtown is like any other downtown. It it, it has a different feeling at night than it does mm -hmm. from the daytime. L L.A. is the same way. You've got really nice areas, and then it goes into some really bad at night. It's just a, a different crowd. It gets you have to be careful. That's it. Just it, be careful. It depends on the city. Some cities are just business cities. Yes. And there's not much happening <clears throat> on night, so right. they're dangerous. But like Melbourne, it's a, it is a nighttime place as well, so it's not yeah. too bad. There's always lots of people. But like Sydney, their city, in the main city part, there's not much happening. It's more on the harbour and that. Right. And so that's, but it's still, it's not too bad here. But I don't know what Los Angeles is not. That's more of a business city. It's not a... People downtown is, but no, the no, they're trying night. to build it up. They're trying to make it more of a place to go at night. Mm -hmm. And I've had friends who've gone there, and they they went one block too far from the action area, and they wound up in one of the worst ghettos with a lot of homeless people, a lot of crime, a lot of drugs, a lot of violence. And they just turned the corner and went, "Oops!" And they Oops. got out as quick as they could because that's in the cops everywhere. It was it was not good. Uh, and that's only one block from this really hot and rocking kind of restaurant area. So. I've done that in Los Angeles. I was looking for Highland Avenue and a particular mm. address to the yeah. hotel. But, you know, it goes for thousands of numbers. Yes. I typed in the wrong number in the uh, sat nav ah. and it went to the wrong end of town. It wasn't a very... Yep. When I, I thought, this, I don't think I should be in this gang area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like... Yes, <laughs> it's very go. dangerous when I got out. So I That's thought, right. no, I'm in the wrong part of town. Oh gosh! Well, Jeff, we are at the end of our yeah. show, and um, we only went over by about 14 minutes, so that's not too oh. bad. Um, lots of stuff happening. Maybe next time we have a show, I'll have cameras to show you. I'm dying yes. to test. I, I want to see, you know, how well those really look when you hold them and just go. But they look good. They look like they've got some. You know what, Rick? I want you to go cold turkey one day and say, give up cameras for buying I mean, cameras for a year. That, that could happen. Just go you never know. Turkey. You never know. You know, he's been trying for a year to get me to buy a Sony just to see how much I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've resisted. I know you won't Though I did I cave in. Too, I did cave in when I got the C100, and he went, oh, how is it? How is it? Yeah. It sucks. Oh, good. I didn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was I was really glad you did because I was going to say, if you love it, I'll have to go out and get one. Yeah, so. that's funny. Yeah, because I have a little sign saying, stupid camera buyer. <laughs> Don't buy anything. <laughs> even even the camera guy I go, Larry, at, at Sammy's, he always goes, why the hell do you want to buy this? <laughs> I, guess, I don't know. Well, because nobody else does, so there must be, you know, there must be something to say, but I want to be different. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, and I like, you know, I, I'm going to go with what I like, what works, and what's a little more bleeding edge rather than same old, same old settling. Mm. So we'll see how that goes. See that, I'm going to take up Knitting. Bungee jumping. But no, no, not bungee jumping. <laughs> I'm too fearful. I don't want to jump out of planes or anything. <laughs> no, that's right. So. Uh, so, anyway. Well, everyone, have a good weekend. This is our Labor Day weekend here where no one oh. works, supposedly. And um, actually, it really should be May Day because it's a Labor Day weekend, but they didn't want to make it look like it was a communist holiday. So they made it September instead of May Day. Oh, okay. It's always a deception. <laughs> it, it's actually Labor Day. It's the Kami holiday. <clears throat> anyway, have a good one, everyone. Enjoy your long weekend, and we will see you next week. Buy some camera gear. Let us know if you like it so we won't buy it. Take care, people. See you later, Jeff. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>